When you're first starting out, coming up with a good routine or a good groove for studying programming concepts can be a little bit tricky, especially because some computer science topics are a little bit taboo if you've never experienced them before. So today I have a few tips that will help you make the most efficient use out of your study time and also help you retain what you're learning. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. If this is your first time seeing me, hi, I'm Brie and I'm really happy to have you here. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some tips that I have if you are currently just starting out with studying programming. I think some of these tips will also work if you've been studying for a while. Studying programming concepts can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're just like first getting started out, trying to figure out exactly how to do it because some of the computer science topics are a little bit different if you have never seen or tried to study them before. So I have quite a few and even if you've been studying for a little bit, maybe you'll be able to take something away from this video that you might not have thought about. So let's get into it. So my first tip is to diversify your resources. You'll want to use a variety of different books or videos or online tutorials to study the same topic. So this not only gives you a well-rounded view with multiple different perspectives, but it also helps you to cover more ground. Some topics are very, very big and every tutorial can't cover every single thing about that topic. So it's very possible that one of your mediums that you chose will cover different information about that topic than another. For example, if I'm studying JavaScript, one book might explain closures one way and a video tutorial might explain it a different way. This is good because I can see the information in two perspectives and it's also good for me because more than likely if I see the information twice in different ways, one of them I'll be able to receive and understand a little bit more. This is also great if you're just starting out because you can see exactly how you learn best. I'm definitely more of like a hands-on and visual person. So when I'm reading textbooks, it's more for like the textbook knowledge or uh, the textbook understanding of things. But I personally learn best from doing the hands-on tutorials. So my second tip is going to sound really obvious and it's don't skip the basics. It can be really tempting to just jump over the first section or the first chapter of a tutorial or a video or whatever you're doing, but don't do it, even if you think that you might have seen that information before. In order to jump into the more fun or complex topics, you have to have a great foundation in the basics and by skipping the beginning, you might be missing something that you're actually going to need. My third tip is, don't just watch a tutorial, participate in it. It can be really easy to get stuck in tutorial purgatory where you just find yourself watching multiple tutorials over and over again or different tutorials, but you realize you're not actually taking anything away. So a lot of people say to code along with the examples, but personally when I'm coding along with the examples, it's hard for me to take in the new information, understand exactly what's going on, and also make sure that I'm using uh, the new syntax that they're trying to teach. So I try to sort of break it down a little bit. So what I would recommend is instead of coding along with the tutorial, try watching a small segment of the tutorial or the video, like five or 10 minutes. And while you're watching, take notes on what the person is doing. So the pseudocode or the steps in plain uh, language that they're taking to achieve it, and also take notes of the new syntax as well. And then from there, once you've watched the five or 10 minutes, try to take that uh, pseudocode and the steps that they used to try to replicate the example on your own. This is gonna highlight exactly what parts you picked up or which parts you didn't pick up. You'll be able to see if you are struggling with the syntax or you're struggling with understanding the functionality. So if you need to go back and watch the, that part of the tutorial again, I would say like rinse and repeat and do the same thing and see how far you get again. Once you've completed it or you think that you've completed it, uh, go ahead and compare your implementation with that person's implementation and see where they differ. This is one of my newer favorite ways of learning new items in programming because it forces me not to think about the programming but to think about the problem that I'm actually trying to solve. So my fourth tip is not to rely on your IDE at first. So 
your IDE or integrated development environment is going to be your coding buddy. They're going to give you suggestions when they think that you have messed up. It's going to tell you when things are wrong. It's going to highlight all of your errors for you and it's going to be great. However, in order to understand how the IDE is able to do that for you, and even to understand some of the suggestions that it's going to give you, you have to understand what it's trying to do. So when you're first starting out, something that I used to practice is writing my code in a different editor, like Notepad++ that doesn't really tell me uh, when something is wrong. And then once I've done a segment of code or finished implementing whatever I'm working on, copy and paste it into your IDE. And then from there, you can see if you have any errors um, that the editor will pick up for you. Uh, a lot of times this is like syntax errors. You might forget like a return, a semicolon, things like that. But it's great practice to get you thinking about those things when you're writing code and not relying on your IDE to just catch it for you. So I just want to also say there's never going to be a time in your career, I'm 99.99% .99 sure, where you cannot use an IDE. This is just for practice. Once you're more comfortable with your programming language or whatever you're trying to learn, then of course switch to the IDE and code in there. So my fifth tip is to write it out with pen and paper or pencil if that's your jam. Writing out your code is a great way to build muscle memory and remember exactly what syntax you need where. I also like writing it out because I can squiggle or underline or uh, remove certain sections and say exactly what they do. This is also a great method to write down in pseudocode uh, some of your plans for the logic that you're trying to implement because then you can preliminary weed out any logic flaws that you might have. So my sixth tip is to take your time. Don't rush yourself. I know that everybody has a goal that they're trying to reach and typically that goal is to get a job as soon as they can. However, if you're just speeding through tutorials, you're not going to be getting as much out of the tutorials as you would have liked. It would be awful to go through like a four hour tutorial and then realize you didn't really pick up much of the content in the tutorial. It can also be really easy to look at a four hour video or a set of items and just say, oh, it's only gonna take me a portion of the day. I can bang that out in one day. But if you're taking exactly four hours to do it, you're probably rushing yourself. Remember, when you're watching the tutorials or uh, reading a specific book, make sure that you are taking the time to practice, to do the quizzes and to have that hands-on knowledge because it's going to help you retain what you're learning more. So typically I would say if a tutorial has a four hour runtime, it's probably going to take me anywhere from six to ten hours to complete depending on how thorough I am uh, and how long the coding examples are. But even though that might sound like I'm doubling or almost tripling the time that I'm taking to complete the tutorial, it's not about completing a certain amount of tutorials. My main goal and your main goal should be to learn and to actually understand what they're trying to teach you. So my seventh tip is to take good notes. I am saying this for myself sometimes. I'm really good at like taking down scribbles and then a few months later, I go and look for the scribbles and I have no clue what I was trying to tell myself. So of course, uh, programming can be a little bit different and everybody takes notes differently, but however you choose to take them, make sure that they make sense for you. My eighth tip is probably one of the most important and it is don't stop learning. So sometimes people think just because you finished uh, learning or finished a tutorial or finished a book on a topic that you can just leave it. And with coding and programming, that is 100% not true. You have to use it. There's tons of ways to continue learning. One of my favorite ways is to build your own projects. Creating projects with what you learned not only takes it one step further, but it allows you to build something that uh, you enjoy, which is going to give you a different lens on the technology that you're using. And then once you start to build upon your project, you might find that you have more advanced or more complex questions about the technology, but you'll have something to reference and you'll be able to see it in action. There's also sites like HackerRank, LeetCode, things like that, where you can code in an editor online and basically do challenge problems, um, puzzles, things like that, code against people. That's also a really great way to practice coding as well. 
a really great way to test your knowledge is to go to forums like Stack Overflow um, where people are asking questions about code and seeing if you can answer some questions about the technology that you learned or the programming language that you learned. One of the best ways that you can learn and also make sure that you actually understand what you learned is by answering somebody else's question. That's actually one of the ways that I learn every day and that's how I can see what I do know and what I don't know. So those are my tips for those who are learning how to code. I hope that this will help. Um, I hope that, like I said, even if you have been studying for a while, maybe you can take one of these suggestions and use it and see if it works for you. So if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And I can't wait to see you all in my next video.